Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Catholic Coffee Talk, a podcast where in between sips, we answer your Catholic questions. I'm your host, Father Brad Doyle, and I have with me our resident good Catholic, Peter Gong. What's up, dude? How you doing? I'm doing pretty well. I feel like I say that every week. I think I always say I'm doing pretty <laughs> hey, well. Look, don't no. don't over don't over complicate small talk. I have to say, how's it going? You have to say it's going pretty well. It's pretty That's well. how it has to happen. All right, so be it. Now, actually, tell me how it be. <laughs> no, I'm doing pretty well, Father. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well then you tell the truth all yeah, the time. No, That's awesome. no complaints. No complaints. It's been uh, it's been a pretty good couple of weeks here. I know it's been a while. Um, how are you doing with the storms and everything? How's your parish? Tell me what's going on. Yeah, well, you know, if I don't know when people are listening to this, but uh, we just had Hurricane Ida come through Louisiana, um, just barrel through um, with a lot of heavy winds. And um, it actually kind of struck my old parish. Um, didn't kind of, it did. <laughs> it just <laughs> waylaid uh, St. Margaret's and Albany and just a certain section of Louisiana, really the toe. If you think about what was affected by Ida, it was like the toe. Last year was Lake Charles was the heel. Now it's the toe. Um, the Felicianas are kind of, we were spared. So that's the parishes that I'm in, the East and West Feliciana. We were spared, uh, but we've been sending Knights of Columbus down to Cook for Hanville, which is kind of south of, uh, southwest of New Orleans. We've gone to Albany, to my old parish. Um, Father Jamin is just being Father Jamin and, and he's got meals three times a day for his whole community. Wow. Um, they got, yeah, he's just an awesome organizer. So he got that. They're, they're running like basically a, um, like a food pantry and supply pantry out of their, their, uh, their parish hall. And, uh, so, but electricity is coming back online for okay. Albany parts of new Orleans, but still, there's still people without electricity even like two weeks later it's crazy yeah i believe it it's funny i i was just reading the pillar i know we talked about that last time we uh recorded i think or two two times ago some episode we we're talking about the pillar but mm -hmm. uh, they were saying that a lot of you know the thing about the hurricanes in louisiana and pennsylvania like the national news cycle moves on after a week but recovery doesn't end in a week recovery doesn't end even in three weeks it takes like months sometimes to really get back to a new normal mm -hmm. so uh anyway yeah just yeah really it, that's different. true that's true it moves on or or you know ida goes up to new york and then everyone focuses on new york and we're like wait a second <laughs> we're over here yep. it's okay i'm not going to complain uh because we choose to live here but i saw this meme uh and it said because everyone always says like well why don't you move <laughs> why don't you move you that you know the hurricanes are coming I don't know what kind of accent that is, but that's how I picture the yeah, person that's... who says things like that. Mm -hmm. Why don't you move? And and I say, well, listen, God gave us a choice between hurricanes and horrible food. <laughs> and we chose hurricanes and good food over horrible food, which is everywhere else. Oh, man. That, that reminds me of a quick story about my, my father. We went to a wedding down in Bridge City, Texas, which is like, ah. on, which I don't know if you know, it's near Louisiana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, on the Gulf Coast. And it was it was a weird experience for me as like a 12 or 13 year old, however old I was, because I'd never really been in that part of the country yet. And it was yeah. just flat as far as the eye could see. And it was right uh -huh. on the cliff, right? So it's like, oh, so if there was four feet of water here with Katrina, it meant there was four feet of water as far as the eye can see, you know? And it was a weird city because it was in Tornado Alley. They get tornadoes. It gets hurricanes like crazy. And it the water table is so high, you can't dig down more than like 18 inches. So yeah. I was just like, this place isn't fit for human settlement. Anyway, we're at, the, <laughs> we're, 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 at, we're at this wedding and the, the bride's parents like hosted all the wedding guests back at their house afterwards. And my, my father, who is so easygoing, really laid back, really chill, never says anything like against anyone, but he was talking with his host, right? The father of the bride. And he was just asking, like, oh, like, so how long have you guys been down here? And like, oh, it, we've been down here like 15 years. We just love it so much. You know, we lost this one house to a hurricane and we lost this other house to a tornado. And then the other house we're building with out of concrete just flooded. So now I got to start over on that. But we just love it so much. We never go anywhere else. And my dad, again, the most laid back man on earth, is just like, have you been anywhere else? <laughs> <laughs> and so mm. it was just an awkward moment. 
Hey, look, Peter, why gain the whole world and lose your soul? You know what I'm saying? Amen. That's my thing. That's why I live down here. Well, look, your dad might question our reasons for living here, but what we're going to do is answer other questions, not about totally pose different things <laughs> about totally different things with what's percolating, where the questions percolating in your head get answers from the church's tradition. At Catholic Coffee, our faith informs everything we do. Like Jesus, we strive to do all things well so we can deliver a great cup of coffee from our family to yours. We at Catholic Coffee use only fresh, ethically sourced beans and do all of our roasting in small batches by hand right here in the USA. We work hard to craft delicious coffee presented in beautiful packaging that will bring beauty to your home and a prayer to your lips each time you brew a fresh pot. We also donate a portion of each sale to reputable and effective Catholic charities here in the U.S. So this is a purchase you can feel good about. For a limited time, Catholic Coffee is offering 10% off for listeners. Use code COFFEETALK at checkout to get 10% off your order of popular flavors like Our Lady of Guadalupe Mexican Mocha or the St. Michael Dark Roast. That's catholiccoffee.com. Use code COFFEETALK. Uh, so read us the question, Peter. All right, we've got a question from Marianne. She asks, can you please tell me exactly what are the promises of God I can rely on? I'm especially interested in promises dealing with restoration. I know we have to be careful about pulling scripture from the Bible and trying to force it to apply to our problem or prayer at hand. I have received incredible restoration of temporal goods in my life, as well as miraculous healings and increased faith. God always seems to restore to me more than that which was stolen, so that I have no doubt that he has his hand in it. I guess I just want clarification of God's promises. So when I am in need, I can pray to God as his child saying, God, you promise. Thanks, Marianne. Uh, yeah, so I think short, I always like to do like the short answer is, and then I explain and talk for 20 more minutes. But uh, short answer is, if God promises it, you can expect it. Um, obviously, so it's not a matter of which promises can we rely on. Like, he gives us promises, uh, and, and if God promises, he gives it. But here's the 20-minute uh, part. But it's important to discern what God actually promises, Yeah. right? Uh, and so, so there's varying schools of thought and different theologies and even some heresies and kind of false gospels, one of which would be the prosperity gospel, Um which is crazy that you asked this question, Marianne, because my whole homily this past weekend was on the distinction between the, the gospel of the cross and the prosperity gospel. And right now we're celebrating the feast of the exaltation of the cross and uh, Our Lady of Sorrows, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Um, and so what is that distinction? Is the prosperity gospel real or true? If it's not, then what is the gospel and what are God's promises? Um, so I started this weekend's homily with a story about Father Josh Johnson um, of, you know, fame. <laughs> he's like, just, he's, just, he's just my friend. Everyone's like, you know, Father Josh. I'm like, uh, yeah, we just hang out. Anyway, Father Josh uh, would, he was driving to the Chimes. This is a restaurant in Baton Rouge. And it's uh, it's on LSU's campus and it was like a midday on a Saturday or something. We we're going to lunch and I was checking my phone in the passenger seat and I put my phone in my, in my lap as I often do. But then I forgot it was there and I went to get out the car, right? You can already see what's going to happen. The phone goes flying, you know, I get up from the car, the phone's flipping end over end. I'm like, no. And then it, but don't worry, it didn't break because it's fall was broken by a puddle of vomit. No. So it went in. Yeah, exactly. That's uh, the entire <laughs> congregation went from like, like, oh, this is a nice story. Oh, uh, uh, <laughs> Father Brad, you can't use the word vomit in a homily. And I'm like, hey, it's in scripture. It's in Revelation. Yep. It's be, in Proverbs. Be, <laughs> be cold or hot or I'll vomit you out of my mouth. Yep. And anyway, but so it lands in this vomit. And I'm like, oh, no. And Father Josh runs around the car and goes, oh, God loves you. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to punch you in the face, man. And, uh, but he was true. He was serious. And he was like, oh yeah, God wants you to be holy. That's how he responded. Wasn't ready to hear that at the time. But um, it, it, I always look back at that moment and think, okay, that's how the saints respond. 
mm -hmm. uh, to hardship, knowing that, you know, physical suffering, financial suffering, persecution are not, uh, sometimes we can see it as, as a punishment from God. Well, the irony is that it's actually a blessing and a gift that he allows us to experience because he wants us to experience the cross. Mm -hmm. And that these are the things that God promises us. God, God promises us a sanctity, fulfillment, and joy, right? We will be happy. The saints were happy and joyful and fulfilled, um, but it's not through physical health and wealth because he says, you know, uh, it's easier for a camel to pass through an eye of a needle than a, a, a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. So yeah. actually rich is in love of wealth, love of money, trust of money and wealth or health actually gets in our, the way of the promises of God. Um, you know, we just look at the lives of the saints. He, yeah. he promised Mary a sword would pierce her heart. That was today's reading on Our Lady of Sorrows, the gospel. Um, Simeon says a sword will pierce your heart. That's God promising through this prophet. Mm -hmm. uh, he promises the apostles that they would watch him die many times. He says, I'm going to suffer and die and be buried for three days and I'll rise again. And Peter's like, no, -uh. no, that's not how it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be like, you know, you're supposed to kick everyone's butt. And he's like, no, that's not how it's going to be. Then he promises the disciples they will be persecuted as well. If they persecuted me, why well, are they going to persecute you? That's a promise. Yeah. <laughs> and basically promise that the lovers of wealth uh, and health would not enter the kingdom of heaven. Um, if that's, if, if you loved it more than God, um, and so that's the promises of God. Yes, we'll be happy. He'll take care of us. Sometimes he, he gives us particular blessings, maybe even financial or, or a miracle, like through the intercession of a saint, we hear all those miracles. So, so th sometimes that happens, but that's not the end, right? That's not the end goal of our discipleship. The end goal is sanctity. And sometimes that happens through suffering. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's the kind of thing where if you just look at the lives of the saints, I mean, you brought up those biblical examples, which are great, but even outside of that, like the, I don't know, take your pick. They suffered, like they suffered hard and they were holy. Uh, St. Sebastian. Yeah. St. Sebastian. He was murdered twice. <laughs> right. That's, that's. Uh, yeah. So uh, that was, it was crazy. The, uh, I had a, a family staying with me over the hurricane. Um, a good friends of mine, mm -hmm. they came and evacuated to St. Francisville and, um, and one of their girls was like, she's, I think three. And she, she was opening up this book of, of the Vatican. There's all these paintings in the Vatican. There was St. Sebastian there. And she was just like, why does he have arrows in him? And I was like, well, because people yeah. didn't like that. He was loved God and loved Christ. And they shot him with arrows. And she was like, Oh no, <laughs> it was just, it was like a, it was like a, a child's first understanding at least a little bit of what martyrdom was and i was like wow i got to experience that like she just realized like oh no this is like like i get you know to get ice cream if i'm good at church this guy got arrows in him and then and then later she goes but this was so cool dude later she said something i said oh you, you're gonna go to mass later and she goes sometimes i don't love god and i'm like what josephine and she goes well, sometimes I want to do other things other than go to mass. And I, I explained to her, like, you could love God. Like you don't have to go to daily mass every day and you can still love God and yada, yada. But, but there was also something in her statement that was super duper true. It was like, and people don't realize this, like, guess what? If you loved God, you would fulfill your obligation to go to mass. And Josephine realized like yeah. my love is lacking because I don't want to go. She's right. three. But most people are like, I, you know, like, oh, I love God. But I'm not going to live my life for him, right. you know, but I love him. So anyway. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Kind of went off the deep end there. Uh, sorry, Marianne. But uh, yeah, I think you can trust God's promises. Um, don't you have a G.K. Chesterton quote to just I do. melt our faces and our eyes? <laughs> I do. So, I mean, you said God promises sanctity, fulfillment, and joy. And those are the three things you listed. But it, it, uh, it resonates with what Chesterton said, and I thought of this as soon as I saw the question, and um, well, just the quote is this, I won't leave you in suspense. Jesus promised his disciples three things, that they would be completely fearless, absurdly happy, and in constant trouble. I just love that. That's legit. Yeah. Well, you know, because it, it also uh, harkens to the romance of 
of uh, following the Lord Jesus. Now, if you sign up for an adventure, you're not signing up for comfort and safety. Um, you're signing up for to be hunted by a society, you know, not to be too dramatic, but we, we will be, whether it's by arrows like St. Sebastian or, you know, with, uh, I don't know, by taxa <laughs> taxation uh, because we won't like provide contraception or something, yep. uh, whatever that might be, uh, we will be, be hunted. And look, there's nothing, I love running. I love playing paintball, you know, mm -hmm. you're constantly, you're like alive. You're like, we're in the battle, baby. And that's what the Christian life is. Yeah. So while I was searching for that Chesterton quote, because I was like, is it Chesterton? I don't know. I remember the quote. I just don't remember who, who wrote it. So I did some Googling to make sure I had it right. And while I was doing that, I came across like, I don't know, when you Google God's promises, nothing on the first like five pages were Catholic. I'll put it that way. Um, mm -hmm. there's just a lot of like specious things out there about what God promises and all that stuff. So, um, I mean, this is why I think it's such a great question. It's so worth talking about and kind of cutting through some of the noise, but there was one like infographic I saw that was one of the top hits on Google that mm -hmm. listed seven promises. And I wanted to go through them and get your reaction to them and kind of talk about why I think all of them are wrong or at least partly wrong. I could see someone being right, but you have to have caveats, yeah. but keep going. Yeah. So I just want to run through these with you and get kind of your reactions and, and talk about them. We can just kind of do this quickly. We don't need to spend too much time on it. Okay. All right. But it, it basically said, here are the seven promises that are true. If you trust God, full stop. Number one, you will never be separated from his love. Go for it. Okay. Well, I, I would say by things that are outside of our control. So the only right. thing that can separate us from God's love is ourselves. Right. You know, I think, I think he's, I think he's, uh, that, that's a reference to Paul where he says right. neither height nor depth, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future yep. things could yep. separate us from the love of God. True. But you can, right. So sin, that, sin can and does sin, sin can. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So I was like, okay, close, but no. Number two, okay. He will make all your plans succeed. No, <laughs> only unless all your plans are sanctity. Right. Unless your will is entirely united to his yes. already, which this is, sorry, yeah, is yeah. <laughs> what's that? I, I was just saying like, all of this can be summed up. Like we have to abandon ourselves to God's will. Right? Like the third one, he will give you the desire of your hearts. Well, what do you desire? Right. You know, St. Augustine says, love and do what you will. And some people can hear that quote from Augustine and say, oh, Gus is a hippie. I can do anything as long as I love. Yeah. Exactly. And it's like, well, love, there's a, there's a, there's a responsibility with love. And yeah. there's a meaning, a true meaning for, of what love is. And if that's not what you want, then he won't give you that desire. Right. Number four, he will always protect you from sin if you hand over your life to him right i'm like uh <laughs> it, depending on how you define protect he didn't protect his son you know like his son was crucified exactly. why would, yeah, yeah. Why would we expect saying, to not suffer you know number five we will have struggles i'm like yeah okay that's it that's good that's good yeah. good job number six but there will be justice i'm like in the end, in the end, in the, end. the final judgment, the final might judgment the end, might be the end of time, but yes, there will be justice. And then seven, he has a plan for your life. That is true. Like, yep. I'll say that one's true. All right. But all yes, right. It, so you have to have a correct understanding of all these things. And, I, and our fears are that that's uh, someone might like, if you're just searching Pinterest, like we know you do all the time, Peter, mm -hmm. that's where you got all this is off of Pinterest. You oh, yeah. Pinterest. You got an active Pinterest. Uh, when I go home at night, I spend about three or four hours a night on Pinterest. Yeah. You would be the most depressing Pinterest person, actually. <laughs> See, all these. Well, no, like, like you, your infographic would be like, it would be truthful, but like not very Pinterest, <laughs> but not very Pinteresty. It would just be like, God will require you to suffer. Heart. Just smile. <laughs> yeah, like heart. Uh, but it is it's true. It's true. So gotcha. thanks. Thanks for bringing us through that. Um, that is true. And yeah. I think, I think we kind of, we already answered the question basically. Yeah. I, mean, I, I don't, I don't bring this up just to like bash other, I don't know, other denominations or the thinking out there, but it's just to, to focus it back on 
on surrender and the the gospel of the cross, like you said, you know, that the, you know, suffering is a part of the Christian life. Yeah. Well, you know, not to be a downer, maybe we need a little pick me up. We need a little pick me up. We need a little bean of the week. Everyone needs a pick me up. Here's ours. Peter, what's your uh, pick me up? Football season is back and I'm just loving it. You know, last season I did not follow the NFL really at all. COVID, a lot of stuff going on in my life. And then as a Patriots fan, I just wasn't really sold on like the Cam Newton thing. Um, it's a so good, just, good instinct. <laughs> I just didn't, I don't know. I just didn't really plug in that much that season. Um, but this season I'm like geared up, I'm ready to go. Um, and yeah, week one just, just passed and the Patriots lost, but it's all right. Um, Guess yeah. who won? What's that? Guess who won? The Saints won. Dude, they destroyed yeah. the it Packers. I was insane. Made Aaron Rodgers look like a two-year-old mm-hmm. whiny baby. <laughs> As he really truly is. I locked up the Saints to win this coming week. We got like a football survivor league here at the office. And you like pick one team every week. Mm-hmm. If, Who are we playing this week? I'm playing the Panthers. Yeah, we got them. Yeah. Look, look, our team is so stacked. The defense is on fire. Lockdown corners. Hopefully, Lattimore comes back soon. He had to have surgery. Um, our offensive line was just dominant. Um, and then Jameis can see. Finally, he had LASIK. Yeah. So this is his first start. And I'm this, like, he can who, see people. Who don't know what we're talking about, right? Jameis Winston was like his quarterback who is high ceiling, but could make big mistakes too. Like you'd throw. Yeah, he threw 30, 30 interceptions and 30 three touchdowns in yeah. the season. Like the and first then person in, in the off season, he got LASIK surgery, which is like, wait, what? He needed LASIK surgery. And then, <laughs> <laughs> and then like week one, he comes out playing for the saints and he's like a, an animal. He's made he through five touchdowns, zero interceptions. We're like, that's what it was. And he would always squint, <laughs> right? He was always squinting. It's like, Oh, well, Hmm. We found your problem. <laughs> and I'm glad he is now, uh, been, we're benefiting from it. So yeah, I'm excited yeah. about the Saints season. Uh, as well i'm a big who that um so uh, mm-hmm. all our listeners out there if you don't have a football team to root for um you can root for the patriots i guess or the saints which you know saints we're all called to be saints yeah uh, if you're catholic no, it's, it's kind of like it's you got to be a notre dame fan you also have to be a new orleans saints fan. yeah well i'm a notre dame fan by default because i don't follow college football i just don't it's not really my thing yeah. so yeah notre dame well speaking of football my my uh pick of the week was a, a particularly a particular performance of the national anthem you know we just had as we're recording we just um observed the 20th anniversary of the events of 9-11 mm-hmm. um and so uh, you know we worked in a homily about suffering and about persecution and then uh, but I also was like kind of searching the internet as well and i saw some patriotic videos and, and some of them highlighted whitney houston's performance of the national anthem at the 1991 Super Bowl in Tampa and by far the best performance of the national anthem ever done it is fantastic it, she just so with ease just sings it and doesn't go, go too crazy not doesn't popify it too much she right. just sings it how it's supposed to be sung and uh, there's some good uh, John Clayton was the uh, the orchestral setting Mm. He, he wrote the orchestra set and it's really good. So go right, check I'll, that out. I'll definitely check that out. And since I can't link to the existence of football in the show notes, I'll try to link to this performance. So I can there you it. go. <laughs> <laughs> you could link to the, uh, to, I don't know, the Saints website or something. <laughs> You've been listening to Catholic Coffee Talk with me, Father Brad, and our resident good Catholic, Peter Gohm. Coffee Talk is brought to you by The Catholic Company and is part of the Good Catholic Podcast Cooperative. If this episode has blessed you, you can find more content at www.goodcatholic.com. As always, we ask you to leave a review, a rating, share a pod with a friend, or simply pray for us in our mission. If you have a question of your own that has been percolating, shoot us an email at askapriest at goodcatholic.com. Or you can leave a voice message at speakpipe.com slash Talk. Uh, We might feature your message on a future episode and we'll answer all your questions to the best of our ability. To quote the psalmist, taste and see that the Lord is good. Continue to drink deeply from our great faith. We'll talk next week. Peace.